From one neighbor to another, WCTE PBS is here for you. Coming up next is Live at 5 on WCTE PBS and its streaming platforms to provide updates on communities throughout Central Tennessee. I love Cookville and the surrounding area so much, so I love to hear when people find their home there and then start a business. That's always very exciting. Okay, so let's get to some bugs. What are some of the most common problems or requests that you all hear about concerning bugs? The most popular request is just a regular maintenance service. Um, we're, we're getting to be quite known for specifically in Putnam County. Our pricing is really competitive and we don't charge a startup fee, which is different than most companies. The interior and the exterior of your home spraying and then we also sweep down any webbing or nesting that's present each quarterly service all right so a lot of people just have general concerns do do people call for anything specific on a regular basis yes sometimes that's what starts your quarterly service um pretty often is mice or ants um, the ladybugs cellar spiders things like that Yes, I certainly understand that. We, we have some bugs in our house uh, occasionally. So one of the questions that you may or may not get, but that I'm curious about, are some of the chemicals, or if it's not chemicals, what, whatever substances you use, are they safe for humans and pets? Absolutely. Uh, very often we're asked that about safety around pets and children. So a lot of the products that we use are water-based, and they're diluted so low that it's really similar to what you're putting on your pet um, in products like Frontline. And, and it's what the Tennessee Department of Agriculture allows us to use is the chemical percents. All right. Thank you. Do people have a lot of questions about that? Is that something people seem to care about? Or are people more concerned with the bugs being out of their house? It uh, depends on the client. I think number one comes the concern of the pest. And directly is, oh, oh, wait, yes. What about is it safe? So, you know, even often there'll be a follow-up phone call or message specifically addressing the safety. Yes, thank you. I know that when we have issues, I am concerned more so now with a child and a cat in the house, but I'm glad to know that the thing we already use on our cat is probably no more potent than what you are using to kill the other bugs or to misplace, misplace, not really the word. Do all of the treatments that you do, are they to eliminate the bug or do you all have any sort of service that will relocate them out of someone's house? No, it, there's no relocating. It is. I mean, we don't think. <laughs> but yeah, just, we, we just need them to no longer be alive. <laughs> That's what I figured. I just thought I would ask because I know that some people are concerned and love every little critter. So thought I might as well see if there was some kind of solution to that. So I know that we are in the winter right now, in the cold, and a lot of people may think that there are not as many bugs in the cold or they may not see as many, but are there some bugs that we need to be more concerned about now in the winter as opposed to the warmer months? Well, definitely in the winter, you'll see a lot of brown recluse. If you're having brown recluse, uh, they're living in your home, so they're not getting exposed to the element. So you do wanna stick on top of that service, definitely. Um, mice really increase during the winter months because they like warm just like we would. Um, German roaches, you usually get a really big influx around the holidays. Um, as everyone's bringing in all the packaging and all the cardboard, you tend to bring in unwanted pests that thrive in those environments. Cold, damp cardboard. That sounds really appealing, cold, damp cardboard, but I guess it is appealing to the, the bugs and the pests that are out there. So I know they're looking for warmth. We, right now in our house, the two biggest pro problems that we are having are the stink bugs and ladybugs. And although my daughter is really into ladybugs right now, we don't necessarily want them in swarms in our house. So do you have any suggestions on what we should do about those two bugs? 
There's been a lot of talk about ladybugs and stink bugs. So whether up and down, we, we see it very often. So something we offer for our quarterly pest service is free callback. If you do start to see the stink bugs or the ladybugs, um, they're included in that quarterly service, but if you have a quicker knockdown, if you're seeing them inside, we'll actually come in and treat also around maybe your windows for any able to get in. They don't need much room to get inside, so. Thank you. All right. So I know that I've heard of some bugs that may not be harmful and that may actually be good for you to have around your home. Is that true? And what are some of these bugs? Yes, a good example of a good bug or pest would be cellar spiders. They actually could kill, um, they defend off maybe poisonous spiders such as the brown recluse. Uh, it's not very often that folks want them to still be left alone though. So I don't know how often someone would, would want you know, them left alone and we can't control so much of keeping the cellar spiders, but to eliminate. And so that's kind of tricky, but I'm sure, you know, how important honeybees are for pollination. So that's an important pest. I was just telling them about your bug puns on your Facebook page <laughs> and how much I've enjoyed watching them. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, bug don't bother me or bug me. <laughs> Yes, it's very interesting. I was saying that I believe you do a lot of the marketing and Ryan does most of the bug treatments, but that you're also certified to do them, correct? Yes, ma'am. That's fantastic. All right. Well, I did already mention your Facebook page, but I also want to let everyone know that your website is gracepestservice.com. So if you need more information about bugs or pests, want to learn more or talk to them about it, please check out those resources. And Nikki, we appreciate you being here. I'm sorry that we lost you a couple of times. Uh, is there anything that you would like to say before we are out of time tonight? No, I'm having me. Thank you. I really enjoyed getting to speak with you. Uh, again, I hope you keep up the bug puns on Facebook. I really enjoy them. It's a nice, a nice way to take a business that is sometimes hard to market, I'm sure. So I appreciate that. I hope everyone will check that out. And thank you for being here, Nikki. Uh, please stay tuned. Craig Lefevre will be here when we get back and we will chat with him. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Lindsay Pride, editor of the Herald Citizen, with your story of the week. The Upper Cumberland received its first snowfalls of the year last week, just as many students were set to return back to school following a two-week winter break. Many saw several inches of snow on the second day of the year, followed by the most significant snow in many years, with some reporting up to eight inches of snow. The snow closed many schools and businesses as daytime temperatures stayed below freezing and state government offices temporarily shut down for a couple of days. It was the first time Putnam County Schools used any of its 13 built-in snow days this school year. Communications Supervisor Hannah Davis said the school system still has nine more days that classes could be canceled for snow without impacting any spring or summer breaks. The snow also created problems for travel last week. Putnam County Road Supervisor Randy Jones said his road crews have been out this week patching potholes on the county's roads. Jones says those potholes were created by the salt that was applied to the roads. Salt deteriorates the oil in the asphalt, and for that reason, the oil and chip roads are not salted. Cold mix asphalt is used to make repairs to roads in the winter because the plants that manufacture hot mix asphalt are closed down. Road departments like Putnam County's also have to dig deeper into their budgets to deal with snowy conditions. Jones says it costs $1,000 every time a county road department truck goes out with a load of salt, and that salt costs about $100 a ton. The National Weather Service forecasts another chance of rain and snow showers Friday and Saturday. To read more about this story, visit our website at herald-citizen.com or read our Wednesday print edition. Thank you and good night.
Welcome to your PBS Passport Update. I'm Josh Deepin with WCTE PBS. This month we have no shortage of long-awaited season premieres. All Creatures Great and Small returns for its second season. If you are already a member of WCTE PBS or are planning on becoming one, you can stream the entire first season right now or whenever you please with your Passport membership benefit. In addition, starting on January 9th, you can watch every single episode of All Creatures Season 2 only on Passport instead of waiting around for broadcast every Sunday. For the mystery lovers, Vienna Blood also returns for its second season premiere. Set in the illustrious backdrop of Austria's opulent capital, the show follows Max and Oscar as they investigate the death of a Hungarian countess. As with all creatures, you can watch all of season one on Passport right now and all of season two the night of the premiere. Finding Your Roots season eight premiered for broadcast on January 4th. Stream full episodes of past seasons now with PBS Passport. Episodes of season eight will be available with PBS Passport soon. Other programming available only with Passport includes the five-part miniseries Nova Universe Revealed, as well as specials focusing on black holes and the Big Bang. If you are interested in becoming a member of WCTE PBS to receive the added benefit of Passport, you can do so by scanning the QR code below using your smartphone or by going to wcte.org forward slash Passport. We want our members to enjoy the digital content WCTE PBS has to offer to the Upper Cumberland region and to enjoy the additional content that may not air on television or that you may have missed. Make sure you stay tuned for the next Passport update. Till then, I'm Josh Deepin. Have a great weekend, stay safe, and keep streaming. Hello, welcome back to WCTE PBS Live at Five. Glad to see you all again. Our next and final guest of this evening is Craig Lefevre. Craig is the new station manager for WCTE PBS. He most recently served as the Director of Technical Operations and FCC Compliance before being promoted to station manager. I wanted to make sure I got his previous title correct. A lot of different terms in there. Craig, we are all so excited that you are taking on this role as station manager. Will you give us a little introduction about yourself and your background? Sure, sure. That's, uh, yeah, that, that last uh, title was way too long. Uh, I wasn't crazy about having to write that out every time. I usually shortened it, but uh, it's, uh, uh, it, it, I really appreciate uh, WCTE and particularly uh, uh, our CEO, Avery Hutchins, and giving me this opportunity. Um, it, it's something that I've been working toward for um, probably about the last, uh, well, definitely the last 15 years, um, uh, maybe longer than that. I'm originally originally from Detroit, um, moved to Smithville to, uh, to attend Tennessee Tech. I graduated from Tech with a journalism degree, um, went to work in uh, newspapers, um, uh, but while I was at uh, while I was at Tech as an undergrad, I took an internship with WCTE, and it was it was probably one of the best experiences that I had in my uh, entire academic career. It was a lot of fun, I met a lot of good people, um, picked up some skills along the way. And after I had worked for a while, I decided uh, I wanted a little bit more than what I was doing uh, in newspapers. So I went back and got an MBA again at at Tech. And it just so happened that, uh, that one of the jobs that I had after that didn't work out. So I ended up back at uh, WCTE. There was, a, there was an opening in master control and Rick Wells was, uh, uh, was in charge of that at the time. He, he let me come on in master control and I've been here, uh, uh, that was 2006 and I've been here uh, 15 years this year. So uh, just sort of, sort of naturally worked into this role and uh, just uh, just glad to be here and uh, and glad uh, glad um, that it wasn't uh, I'm glad that I stuck with it you know there's a lot of people I remember my grandfather told me he says I think this TV thing is really going somewhere <laughs> and, and I, I didn't understand that particularly at the time but and 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 I'm not sure that I do now but uh, anyway we're here. Thank you. It sounds like you've had some really great experiences and were able to learn about a few different things before landing in the station manager role. Yeah, it, you know, the, the a TV station is a wonderful place if you if you're if you're a person with ADD 
<laughs> who needs a lot of things uh, to keep them interested. Uh, the, the TV station is a great place for it, particularly a small station like WCDE, because uh, we can really go out and uh, get our hands dirty uh, in a number of different areas, in production, um, in engineering, in, in marketing, in sales, in, you know, the opportunities here are, uh, are almost limitless if you're looking to do, you know, a different thing every day. Uh, and I think all of that served me, uh, served me pretty well, you know, just, just sort of sticking with it. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm grateful to, uh, to a lot of people, Rick Wells, of course, um, uh, the engineer who was here when I started was uh, Dilip Saha. He was only here a little while, but then uh, 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 Wayne Rossberg, the late Wayne Rossberg, who's a great engineer from, uh, I can never remember if it's Vermont or New Hampshire, but he, he did a lot of uh, uh, did a lot of consulting work for us, and, and he had a lot of confidence in me. And I, even though I wasn't a trained engineer, I learned a lot uh, from him and was able to, uh, to go on and expand they expand my horizons that way. So, uh, yeah, it was. I spent five years as director of technical operations, and uh, you know, it just sort of grew out of the fact that we had one engineer, Ralph Welch, who's still with us. He's a great, uh, great engineer. He's a true engineer, though, in that uh, uh, he 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 really appreciated having somebody to do his paperwork and <laughs> answer emails and that kind of stuff. So I was. Fortunate to be able to step into that role and to build some of those relationships, and it allowed me to uh, uh, to expand into the role of director director of technical operations, um, which we hadn't had before. So, uh, but anyway, that's all that's right. Sort of Thank you, and Craig, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back to hear more about your new role. Okay. Welcome back to the Sports Wrap-Up. I'm Noah McKay with the Upper Cumberland Reporter, and I hope you all had a happy new year. Now let's take a look at the sports landscape. Winter weather caused cancellations of games throughout the area last week, but there are several key matchups on Friday as we enter the heart of the high school basketball season. Clay County will travel to Gordonsville. Pickett County will take on Red Bowling Springs. Cumberland County will host DeKalb County. Cookville will host Lebanon in a doubleheader where the girls game will see the undefeated Lady Cavaliers take on a Lebanon team who was in the state championship game last year and Upperman will travel to Livingston for a District 7 AAA doubleheader. The girls game will see the fourth ranked Lady Bees take on the third ranked Lady Wildcats with the boys game to follow. Those games will be streamed live on the Upper Cumberland Reporter Facebook page with pregame coverage starting at 555. That was the sports wrap up. I'm Noel McKay. Have a great day. On the next episode of It's Your Business, we learn valuable small business tips from real estate broker Amber Flynn Jarrett, as well as Diego Alvarez, owner of the Royal House of Cheese. Join us right here for another incredible episode of It's Your Business. Living Minute, a look at the latest medical innovations changing our lives. Brought to you by Thermo Fisher Scientific's Coronavirus Testing Program for Schools and the Health Channel. The U.S. Surgeon General says there's a mental health crisis happening among kids. Depression and anxiety symptoms have doubled and visits to children's hospital emergency rooms are higher than they've ever been. We're seeing higher than normal or higher than ever actually uh, visits to our emergency department. Unfortunately, for uh, things such as major depressive disorder, suicidal ideation, and at times uh, unable to keep the children here at our hospital and have to transfer them out to other hospitals. The Surgeon General's report also noted fewer in-person interactions with teachers and school counselors made it harder to recognize signs of child abuse, mental health concerns, and other challenges. My name is Donna Matson, Director of Human Resources and Business Operations with WCTE PBS. Did you know the broadcasting industry in Tennessee is thriving and offers exciting career opportunities? WCTE has immediate openings for your consideration. Benefits include health, dental, vision, life, retirement, sick time, vacation, holidays, and AFLAC. Visit WCTE.org. Come join our team. 
Welcome back. We are here still with Greg Lefevre. And did I just call you Greg? We have it's someone okay. else on staff, Greg, and I'm so sorry. So Craig, <laughs> goodness, my apologies. Everyone uh, else does it too, right? Okay. Exactly. Craig, <laughs> uh, it sounds like you have had a lot of experience behind the scenes, some really important, and so we're glad to have you in front of the camera. What are some other things we can expect from your new role? And can you tell us a little bit about the station manager role? Well, I'm hoping it's not going to involve too much time in front of the camera uh, for, for my sake and the viewers oh as well. Gosh. But uh, it's, I, I, you know, I guess I kind of, I want to find out from the staff, from, from you, maybe you need to tell me what I need to do because I, I envision this, this role, this job title as sort of a support role um, for the entire staff. Uh, and for uh, for Avery, of course, our CEO, uh, and I, I think the the biggest part of it is is just going to be keeping track of what's going on uh, with everybody, so that uh, so that we can make sure that we're that we're pulling together, that we have the same goals, and that all of us are pulling. Uh, and I think that's going to go a long way toward. Uh, uh, toward helping us improve the station, and, and you know, I've got some, um, it, it got some things that that I would like to see while I'm here that I would like to accomplish. But uh, as far as the role of the station manager, you know, it's, I think it is what what we make it, and uh, and just I'm just hoping that I can, uh, that I can be a benefit to the station and to the community. Thank you. I think you will be able to be a benefit. You mentioned that you have a lot of things that you'd like to accomplish. So what are some of your goals as the station manager? Well, probably the biggest one right now, of course, is to um, it, it are the goals that we mentioned in our um, in our strategic plan that we did last year. And, and I really want to to see the station hit those goals. I want to see our uh, our membership uh, be up 30%, our sustaining members be up 15%. I think that if I can support everybody else to to get those goals up where they need to be, then we can uh, uh, we can move on from there and we can do some other things. I really want to uh, see an improvement in the quality of the things that we do. And I think um, a, a lot of that is going to come from my biggest goal for myself is to and this, you know, this may be pie in the sky, but I would love to see us uh, within a few years be in our own uh, building. And I really want to to push toward that because uh, we're never going to be able to do the quality of programming that that I feel like we can do, that we have the people to do. We're never going to be able to do that until we have uh, our own facility that we can control uh, and that that has the things in it that we need. Uh, you know, I think that's I think that's very important, and that's you know, looking forward, that's what I'm. That's if I'm going to have a legacy in in 15 years, however long I stay here, that's what I'd like it to be. Well, those do sound like some lofty goals. I do love hearing about the membership goals. Obviously, I'm very into achieving our membership goals and increasing our donors and our membership. As you heard, everyone, we are hoping to eventually have our own building. If you are interested in helping out with that or would like to learn more or talk to us, let us know. All right, so your previous position is currently open and we are accepting applications right now. So would you like to share a little bit about what you're looking for to fill that role? Yeah, we. Uh, what I really need is somebody who uh, who has some technical aptitude. You don't have to be an RF engineer. You don't have to be, uh, you don't even really have to be a, 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 a TV person. It would be good if you were in communications, um, but I'm looking for somebody who, um, who can solve problems, who has great problem solving skills, uh, somebody who can follow through on projects and stay on top of them. Um, I'm looking for somebody with a history of, uh, uh, of these things that, um, you know, who has maybe worked in other industries uh, because TV people are getting harder and harder to find. Um, you know, we can, you can pull somebody in who's a YouTuber who's been making uh, YouTube videos and that's about as close as you're going to come to finding somebody who's been in TV uh, in these parts. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, the way technology is changing, if we can just, if I could find somebody who's a great problem solver and who can, uh, who can come in and learn the software that we use and learn the hardware, then, yeah, that's, that's, that's who I'm looking for. All right. That sounds like some pretty big shoes to feel to fill. I am struggling with my speaking tonight. I apologize. Uh, a lot of those words don't even make sense to me. I'm not what you would call a TV person. So if you uh, if you are interested in applying for that role or you know someone that may be interested, check out our website at WCTE.org. The job posting is on there and I'm sure Craig would be happy to answer any questions you may have about it. All right, so since you are in a new role, I do want to mention a couple of our new events because Craig is going to be a lot more involved on the front end of these. So we do have an Indie Lens pop-up screening coming up on January 25th at Big Tony's Pizza. The subject of this screening is, the title of it is Missing in Brooks County, and it addresses people who are attempting to cross the border and go missing. So if you are interested in that, join us on the 25th at Big Tony's Pizza. We also have our annual dinner on March 22nd, so be on the lookout for more information on that. Check out our website, again, at wcte.org. Craig, do you want to jump in about events or anything else like that? Uh, no, I'm looking forward to uh, to the events. Um, and I've already been attending a lot of them uh, <laughs> over the years, but yeah, they're all they're all great events. And if if anybody can come out, we we love to see everybody. We want to engage with everybody. Uh, that's you know that's that's a big thing for me that we don't just engage with one group of people. We engage with everybody. That's right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Craig. Good luck in your new role. And we look forward to seeing you and being a part of the wonderful things you do to serve WCTE, PBS, and this community. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week. From one neighbor to another, WCTE PBS is here for you. Join us back for the Encore on Sunday at noon. A brand new show of Live at 5 will return at 5 p.m. next Thursday. Thank you for watching.